what's going on everybody welcome back to another video and today the Winnipeg Jets down the Carolina Hurricanes by the score of two to one you know maybe a little bit of a deceiving game Laurent Brassois definitely came up big but Winnipeg's top line did as well so we're gonna talk about all that but first just some housekeeping stuff uh, I didn't make a video about it but Nino Niederreiter has signed a three-year extension worth four million dollars perfect deal I'm a big fan of it Nino has been such a monster since you know being traded from Nashville to Winnipeg last season and he's He's going to continue to be a monster uh, you know for three years beyond this season so I'm really happy that they're able to lock him down it gives the Jets some time to grow their prospects such as McGrory, Barlow, Lambert so I'm very much like the move and I think that's a big piece going forward congratulations Nito Nito Raider for getting paid and second of all, the Jets tonight are wearing their Royal Canadian Air Force jerseys for the first time, so that's pretty cool. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of the jersey personally, but I know a ton of people do like them, and they look, you know, pretty good all together on the ice there. So, you know, fun jerseys, uh, they will wear them twice more before the season ends. But without further ado, let's get on into this one. You know, you'd like to see the Jets start off fast, and they did anything but that. They were getting killed by Carolina, hemmed in their zone. Everything bad was going on. They didn't have a shot until I think like the four minute mark, five or four minute mark left in the first period. Not ideal, but it does help when Kyle Connor is taking your second shot of the game from a disgusting feed from Nikolai Ehlers and potting it, making it one to nothing. Do the Jets deserve to be up one nothing? Probably not, but Cal Connor's been due for a goal. Probably could have scored, you know, three or four the other night against Chicago. But Connor comes up big this time, scores 15th of the season, tied for third in the NHL. The Jets lead 1-0, and that would be it for the first period. I mean, hey, they would kind of tighten it up near the end. It got better as the period went on, but that was an ugly first period. And the Jets, quite frankly, are lucky to get out of it at all. L Laurent Passois, who has not been good at all this season, came through big time for Winnipeg, and they were shot 15-3 in the first period. But after the first, the Jets really started to find their legs a little bit. That first line was going right at the end of the period, started to generate some scoring chances. And in the middle of the frame, 11.39 in, it was Nikolai Ehlers potting home his seventh of the year from a beautiful feed from Shifley. Both of the Jets goals were pretty nice. I'm not going to lie, guys. You know, I know that this has been one of those games where you probably just want to get as much shots on goal as you can. They've got Antiranta playing in net, and obviously Freddie Anderson is out with, a, you know, a blood clot issue right now. Hope that he is, you know, recovering well. But Ehlers puts the Jets up 2 to nothing, probably pretty undeservingly. But nonetheless, they are up 2 to nothing Near the end of the period, I don't know what happened here. It just just a mess. Marty Nietzsche scores his seventh of the season. Late in the period, it's just a real, you know, piss off when the Jets do this. I hate it so much. This was a very, you know, classic Winnipeg Jets game. A banner Winnipeg Jets team where you play like, you know, not very well. You don't have a lot of ozone time, but you find a way to score, you know, one or two goals and your goaltender stands on his head. So they were definitely getting bailed out a bit by Persuad. They came to life a little bit in the second and in the third period, they just weren't able to, you know, continue that momentum. They did lock up a little bit into a shell, try to play more defensively. And there's nothing wrong with that if you take your opportunities offensively. The Jets just kind of didn't do that. They kind of sat back a little bit. I wish, you know, you could have seen a little bit more offense, but, you know, Carolina was pushing for that goal. Carolina played great tonight, hands down, but the Jets need to be better. Uh, heading in deep into the third, uh, look, the, the Kings were getting desperate. They had a lot of shots going to the net. There was a lot of missed penalties, and I'm not one to whine about the refing too much because, you know, it's it's stupid at the end. Like, we, we, we know NHL refing sucks, but I saw Josh Morrissey get cross-checked in the face. I saw Neil Pionk take a stick up high in the ear. Watch Mark Shifley get hauled down, like grabbed by three dudes at the end of the period there trying to get to the open net. And then it doesn't help when you get to the open net that Kyle O'Connor just misses the net, right? So... A really annoying last couple minutes of the game, but in the end, the Jets do hold on. They save the game. Laurent Brassois bails them out and steals a win. A, a, hands down his best performance of the year since coming back to the Winnipeg Jets. Laurent Brassois as the player of the game. I'll be talking about him in just a second. But look, I, you know, going back to the Chicago game, I felt pretty good about that win. Obviously some stuff you like to tighten up, but I felt like the Jets probably could have had a few more goals than they did. I feel like, you know, they just made some amazing stops over there on the Chicago end. However, with 
This game, I didn't feel like the Jets were in control of it really at all. I mean, that top line played pretty good with, you know, Ehlers, Shifley, and Connor. I thought they had a really great game today. But the rest of the team just, there, there was no spark there. And it reminded me a lot of last year's Jets. Uh, you know, maybe the January Winnipeg Jets from last season. And it's it's a little frightening, I'm not going to lie. And I don't want to be this guy, but, you know, they, they have to be better. Of course they do. I don't think that that's a secret. But what I'm, what I'm talking about here is the lines have been a little interesting since Rick Bonus got back and I know it's his team and everything like that and I'm not questioning Bones as of right now however I don't really get the idea of playing Nikolai Ehlers away from Cole Perfetti those guys were absolutely electric the Lowry line was flourishing still playing pretty well and you know look I, I get wanting to ease Velarde in on that second line that's totally fine but Look, the, I, I know the top line was buzzing tonight for Winnipeg and it was great, but it really, just the way the lines are, kind of hurt the team a little bit. And look, I know Ayafalo was in that permanent staple there on the first line, but the Jets were winning games and they looked really good when he was up there. Cole and Ehlers had so much chemistry, the Lowry line was going and the fourth line was contributing at times as well, pretty good defensively. I just don't really understand why you would change up something like that. Like, I know you want to get Gabe in there, that's fine, but maybe add him to the second line where he's not ruining the chemistry of the first line. He can add to the chemistry with Perfetti and Ehlers, and then you've got, you know, Vlad Nemestikov, who, you know, is injured right now, going down to the fourth line and just, you know, adding depth there with Baron and Gus or whoever's there. And I just don't get it, you know, the, things were going pretty well, we changed the lines, and now the Jets are 2-3, and three and probably should be, you know, 1-4 and four in their last five. I do expect things to get better, I don't think that this is something that's, you know, a quick heal for Gabe Velarde, I don't think it's something that's obviously going to, uh, you know, heal very fast, I think that, you know, at times you can see his speed is limited, and, uh, you know, that's just from not playing for a while, from not being on your legs, I think he will regain that speed and everything, and uh, we'll see so we'll see a resurgence in Gabe Velarde, but for the time being, I just think it's kind of silly. But for your big old shining star of the game, I don't think it's a surprise of, you know, name dropped him millions and millions of times already in this video. It's Laurent Persois. Congratulations, sir. 42 of 43 saves on the night. Steals a win for Winnipeg in the home barn. Standing O for Brassois at the end of the game was nice to see, and the Jets come away with a big two points that they desperately need in a very packed Central Division. But with that, guys, you know, going forward here, I just want to see Winnipeg play stronger. They have a really big test against the Colorado Avalanche. They need to, you know, take control of the game right from the beginning. They can't wait until midway through because those good teams are going to kill them, as we saw tonight. Just got bailed out by good goaltending. But I am going to leave it there, guys. Thank you so much for watching, as always. Leave a comment down below. What would you think of the game? I'd love to hear from you guys. I want to hear all of your opinions, so definitely let me know what you think. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Go Jets go. Bye bye.